with Laura. Hi. Hey, tell me Hi. where you are. I am on the island of Havar in the town of Stadigrad. And it is my first time in Croatia since writing the book. And it's the first time in 20 years. Wow. My mom's country. That's amazing. <laughs> the book you're speaking of is this one. It is Immigrant Daughter, Stories You Never Told Me um, by this beautiful woman right here. Um, my, my copy is inscribed to me. Let me see that very happy with this. Um, it is a beautiful, beautiful book. I'm so glad that I get to read some of it to our listeners and on my nightstand. And everyone that hears this, look out for Catherine's episode, which will be upcoming and we're going to be interviewing her. But um, the chapter I that I, that. yeah. taken, I'm Pavar, the same island that I am. Now. Wait, Catherine, say that one more time because you froze for a second. I'm so sorry, Laura. Oh no, it's okay. it's okay. I mean, you're you're on a remote island with no internet. Okay, <laughs> okay just say that one more time. Now you're unfrozen. Right. I'm so sorry. One more time. I'm sorry. Um, the photograph on the cover is on the same island that I am right now. Um, oh, wow. My mom and I, when I was, my dad took that photograph. I was six. And that was the only time I came to this country with my mom. So that's incredible. I actually didn't realize this was a real photograph. That's I, us. I thought it was something that had been mocked up for the cover because it's so perfect. Um, all right. So please pronounce the title of the chapter that I read from again. Restavats. Yes, Catherine's Restavats. Catherine's so Restavats. Tell me, tell me about the section that I read from. Um, this particular chapter is about a journey I took. Um, I embarked on recovering or reclaiming my mom's history after knowing very little about it. Um, my mom died when I was uh, 22 of ovarian cancer, and she just never really spoke about her Croatian history. Um, and I knew a little bit, fragments, but very little. And so after her death, I started writing. And this chapter was a trip I took to try to learn more about her. And I'm on a mountain um, above Zagreb, where she stayed as a teenager in a TB sanatorium because she was almost dying of TB, which mm. is a disease both her parents died of during World War II. Wow. Wow. Incredible. Well, what I was going to tell you was that um, our executive producer, who edits all of our episodes, um, her name is Christina Barsi, and we love her. We just call her Barsi. Uh, she has a really similar story. So when she edited this on my nightstand, she was really, really moved and is now going to write about her own mother's story. Same part of the world, um, Yugoslavia and Croatia, and the same kind of broken right. history. Yeah. So usually the notes I get back from her are like, let me know how this sounds. You know, I'm quality checking basically when she sends stuff back to me. But this one came with a personal letter about how much your piece had moved her. So oh, um, that's so nice. I'm yeah. really uh, hearing readers, and this is a chapter that really um, moves them. Yes, and was an incredible experience for me because I felt like I was walking into my mom's history. Yes, you know, it really felt like a. Almost like I could see ghosts and visions and all of that. Yeah. Well, you, I mean, so you kind me. of do. You kind of describe seeing a vision in the reading and then looking and then it's not there. I won't spoil anymore. I want you guys to listen right. to the reading. But um, Catherine, I know that you had to hustle to get to this location so that you could Zoom with me today. I so appreciate it. This is going to be up on our YouTube channel. Um, which, you know, people go right to after they listen to the episode because they want to see your beautiful face and hear you talk about the piece. So thank you so much for doing this. 
Thank you so much for, um, you know, reading the book. <laughs> it is my pleasure. It is my pleasure. I watched the shadows of branches dancing against the stone walls, geometric shapes of sunlight shifting over the earth. I wandered through one of the buildings and climbed down some stairs through the blackness of a doorway of sunlight blazed in front of me. I leaned through it and saw a small overgrown courtyard. Vines climbed the walls. A tangle of bright green plants and weeds covered the ground. For a moment, I felt as if my story and my mother's story were intersecting. I went back up the stairs and wandered through the empty hallways until I came across a wide, curving outdoor walkway that connected one stone building to another. An open veranda shaded it. It faced down the mountain. For an instant, I saw the faint outlines of patients lying in lounge chairs, the sicker ones in cots covered with gray woolen blankets, a nurse with a stiff white cap on her head. I could see patients playing chess, reading novels, trying to pass the time, occasionally staring into the forest. In those trees, I could see my mom walking with Ruzika arm in arm. I could hear their laughter. I could feel their fear. Here they had battled against the white death. I turned back and retraced my steps until I made my way through another dark corridor. I glanced left and right into tiny rooms. I imagined freshly painted white walls and hospital cots. A bat burst out of the hole in the floor and flew across the ceiling and I cried out, startled. It swooped down into another room. It's just a bat, I told myself laughing, though my heart pounded. I was completely alone.